French fried potatoes. <laughs> Hello, my, oh my, just wonderful. Oh, I just love you guys so much. Your face, I just want to squeeze your face. I love you. So, do you, do you remember last week how I was like, Oh, we changed the thumbnail so that you can see the red bar on the bottom and see if you've watched the video yet. Oh, aren't we so great? And then I and then I didn't I didn't change the thumbnail on that video because I forgot because there's, there's a whole it's Kane it's Kane's fault for not doing the thumbnail for me because I think at this point it's to be expected that if I have to do any sort of editing thing. I'm gonna mess it up. I think that's a given, therefore it's Kane's fault. Moving on, so obviously we had a very, very big news week. Pikachu has joined up with Japanese comedian Pico Taro and they have created a song called Pika to Pico. And um, I really don't like it. I don't, it's not my thing. I just, I don't, it doesn't sound, I don't like it. Okay, seriously though. <laughs> There's also all that Mario stuff. Uh, there were multiple rumors that we were gonna get something in the week. People were even specifically calling out that it was going to be a Mario Direct and what games were gonna be featured in the Mario uh, 3D All-Stars collection. They were right. We got ourselves a nice, big, fat, juicy Mario Direct. I'm not gonna go into a, a whole ton of specifics because if you want to see all the specifics, you can go and watch my video concerning the Direct. But the biggest highlights, obviously, you've got the uh, Super Mario 3D All-Stars collection. It's Super Mario 64, Sunshine, and Galaxy 1. Very disappointing that it doesn't have Galaxy 2. More disappointing that it's a limited release, but again, that is something I'm going to be talking about later. I will say, though, that that is super duper, ooper, flooper, stupid. <laughs> it's really just a bad, just a bad thing that I don't like at all. But yeah, again, I'll talk about that later. You got Super Mario 35, where you got 35 people playing Mario together. You got Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. What's Bowser's Fury? We don't really know yet, but we're gonna find out, I guess. Super Mario All-Stars hit the Super NES service on NSO. There's a whole just range of products and crossovers and stuff, whole bunch of cool Mario celebration stuff. So that was naturally the, 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 the really big headline of the week. One very cute thing that I didn't notice until well after the direct, um, the eShop now has a very cute little Mario theme. You got your Mario red and Mario runs across the screen and stuff when you do stuff. So that's pretty cute. And uh, also speaking of the eShop, uh, it was updated recently with a one relatively small, but very much appreciated new feature. Now, when you are viewing games in list form on the eShop, you can see right there how many days left a game has on sale. You were always able to see when a sale was going to end uh, within the page for the specific game. Uh, but now you can just see them at a glance. So when you're scanning through the sales, you can just see what's ending soon. Small thing, but like I said, very much appreciated. Any additions they can make to the eShop at this point are <laughs> great. A-okay with me, because it's still very bare bones. And of course, that's a, that's a whole thing. Wonderful segueing today, Arlo. Thank you very much. Speaking of the eShop, do you remember how I made that whole entire video? Like lots of people made a bunch of videos, but then like, I think Nintendo was waiting specifically until I, cause my video came like some weeks late. I made a video about how Nintendo had removed Pikmin 3 from the eShop, uh, the, the, the $20 version, naturally because they didn't want it to compete with the new $60 version they're coming out with. And it was a very anti-consumer move and all that stuff. They did the same thing with Tropical Freeze. It's back. They waited until I they waited until I posted my video and they brought it back. At this point, nobody really knows why. Um, it was kind of unexpected because uh, everybody was expecting Super Mario 3D World to get the same treatment and the Wii U version to be delisted from the eShop, and it didn't. And then on top of that, Pikmin 3 came back. Um, Tropical Freeze has not yet come back, at least not in uh, North America. So at this point, we don't really know. Is it possible that they saw all of the 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 backlash and the bad PR and stuff. And they were like, you know what? They're right. We didn't think it was going to get all this attention and it's just kind of a petty move. So let's change it. Or was there some other reason it was taken off and we were totally wrong about this being an anti-consumer move. It was just a, just a, just a thing that we, we don't know. I don't know. 
And uh, and and on that subject, some people did bring up some additional uh, ideas for reasons why they might have taken it down. I don't necessarily think any of those. I mean, like, you know, there's the idea that oh, well, they didn't want it to confuse with the new version when people are searching for it. But I don't think that's super valid because Nintendo has a lot of multiple releases and they don't take them down just to get rid of confusion and all that stuff. I don't know. It's not worth getting into all the way, but it's back. So that's that's the news item right there. It is back. And that's interesting. Is it going to stay back? Are they going to bring back Tropical Freeze 2? No idea. And in yet another piece of eShop related news, this is just very convenient, feels good, makes it feel like the roundup has a kind of <laughs> kind of a structure to it. Um, Nintendo, oh, I also made a video about this, but it was quite a while back. Nintendo didn't wait specifically for me to make the video. So they were doing this thing where like, they didn't want to refund pre-orders and it was a big thing. And uh, there are many countries where digital refunds and pre-order refunds are like super mandatory, but Nintendo pretty much like dug their feet in and were like, no, we are going to fight for our right to deny people refunds on the eShop. And so it was just kind of a big, it was a big thing and it wasn't a really good look for them. Obviously like give people the refunds, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Like, a lot of people did report that if you actually called them, they would do it. It's just their policy that they didn't do it. But I still say even that was kind of disappointing. Um, but it seems that they've gone back on it completely. Now you can cancel a pre-order up to a week ahead of release. Like, once you hit that seven-day mark, uh, then you get charged and you download the game and all that stuff. And from that point on, they won't offer refunds, even though they legally probably should, but they won't. I don't know. But up to that point, you're safe. And it's funny because they actually kind of changed how it worked. Um, before, you would pay the money, download the game, and that would be it. So at this point now, they don't even charge you yet. They don't charge you until that seven-day thing, um, which is a little bit funny because, like, I'm very much glad this is how it is. But there's still like a little tiny part of me that liked being able to just like, I almost wish there was like an option is like, I'm not, I, I surrender my right to cancel this pre-order so I can just get it paid, <laughs> you know, like not worry about the money in my, in my account that I have left, just buy it, download it. I don't want to think about it anymore. So now I really can't, I have to, I won't even get charged until that, that seven day thing. So yeah, it's, it's weird, it's a little bit different, but obviously it's a, it's just a good thing. It's just a good thing to give people, let people cancel the pre, just, just let people cancel the pre-orders. It's just pretty simple. Thank you, thank you Nintendo. The subject of the eShop is now over and my beautiful segues are no more. In Pokemon Go's October update, the game will be dropping support for Android 5, iOS 10, iOS 11, and specifically Apple's iPhone 5S and iPhone 6. If you are still using any of those OS versions or devices, I am sorry. As with most gaming events, Tokyo Game Show 2020 is turning into a live stream instead of an in-person event. The full lineup and schedule have been announced. The show will be taking place between September 24th and September 27th, and Nintendo is once again not there. Once again, I say I don't really get it. They have products coming out. They're doing stuff. Lots and lots of, basically all the other companies are going to be there, including Xbox, including Xbox. They have no presence in Japan. They have struggled in Japan so much, and yet they are still there, still there pushing their product, and a lot of other Japanese companies are there too. I don't want into that reason. I, I don't understand why they're being so hands-off this year. I guess it's not like super necessary for them right now. They don't have any like really, really big titles they're hyping up. So I guess they thought it was just easier to not, or there's some other problem in the company that's preventing them from doing it. I don't know, a little bit weird, but what are you gonna do? An upcoming Famitsu article with Sakurai was leaked recently. And in it, the man revealed that at one point in development of Smash Ultimate, they were looking into rollback netcode. I don't know a whole lot about this stuff, but I do know that rollback netcode is something that uh, is particularly sought after in fighting games. But apparently they just couldn't get it to work for one reason or another. It just, for whatever reason, they just couldn't get it working. Um, I will always be all snobby about it and be like, okay, well, if that didn't work, could you have kept looking and found a thing that did work? Because I know there is a solution. There is one. It just takes the money and the effort to find it. And that's a big, much bigger problem with Nintendo's online thing as a whole. So I'm not going to go too deep. I'm, no, 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 Roberta, you stay out there. 
Keep eating your grass, you're all right. We don't need to go into this right now. Nintendo and the Pokemon Company have trademarked some sort of Pikachu type car named the P-Car. Nobody knows what this is supposed to be or why. Is it gonna be a product that we're gonna be buying all of us, that everyone in the world is gonna be buying soon? Nobody really knows, but um, Pikachu car. I don't know, does that, does that work for you? You gonna pre-order a Pikachu car when they, when they open the pre-orders for a car? If it's not like a full electric car, then I don't even, <laughs> I don't even know, man. Nintendo is hiring again, this time for various design positions. They're going to be having a series of briefing sessions. These are going to be taking place online and people will be hearing talks from a lot of the lead designers in Nintendo, specifically people who have worked on Mario, Zelda, and Splatoon. They didn't say how many people they were looking to recruit, but they are looking to recruit some, again, in various uh, design positions. And so, end of news story. This isn't strictly Nintendo news, but I do feel that it's important to bring up here. Uh, Andy Robinson created a website called the Family Video Game Database. His goal is for the website to be a resource, uh, both for families who want to play games and also uh, for people who need to find out what various uh, accessibility options are in games. Like basically anyone who has an extra need, anyone who has something that dictates what kinds of games they can or should be playing. You know, you're looking at uh, different themes, appropriateness based on age, uh, even, and like I said, like accessibility options, like what games allow you to play uh, in different ways. And the whole goal is to create lots and lots of like really specific categories so that people can search. Uh, he did a little a little write up on Nintendo Life. Go check it out for more information all that, on all this. Uh, some of the examples that he gave are uh, categories such as Attempt to the Impossible, Games about aging, Face tough decisions, Bend time to your advantage, Games for kids not ready for Peggy 16, Games that get children reading. So the reason I bring this up is that this is a very large undertaking. This is a giant database, or at least it should be a giant database. So he's inviting anybody and everybody to come and just help categorize any and all games into any and all categories. Um, it's a it's a very big undertaking, but I think it's a very, it's a very good one. It's just a really, really great cause. This is something that could potentially help out just, I don't know, countless, countless people in their search for, you know, the perfect video games for them. So yeah, go check it out. So here's a really interesting one. People are still unpacking the data from that giant Nintendo leak from a while back. And um, according to internal documents that none of us were supposed to see, apparently at one time, Nintendo was considering making a portable GameCube that could hook up to the TV with a dock. Basically, a GameCube Switch. It wouldn't necessarily be a handheld, it would probably just be portable. It was going to have, you know, a battery and like a little screen on it, a lot like, uh, you know, th there were third party things like that, batteries and screens. I know the, the PlayStation 1 had like an official one, but this was gonna be done by Nintendo. There is just gonna be a little GameCube with a screen on it that you could then put in the dock to hook up to the TV. Um, it's pretty cool. It would have been really, really cool. And obviously they scrapped the idea because the GameCube just didn't really work out. Some people are even speculating that that's why the GameCube ended up being so small and had the little handle on it or something, you know, like just make it more, more portable. Maybe portability was always a thing that they were gonna go for, but then the GameCube just kind of stumbled at launch and just didn't really go anywhere. And so they just didn't care to continue the idea and moved on to the Wii. Though, on that subject, according to Twitter user Luigi Blood, there's also a proposal for Taco, six, Taco, it's the K, not the C though, successor to Dolphin when it was still about power and, you know, not the Wii. Basically, before they thought of the Wii, they were considering, you know, when everybody, PlayStation, Xbox, and everyone was just doing, doing the power thing, there was gonna be a successor to the GameCube that was just, about power, something along the lines of the Xbox 360 and PS3. We can only imagine what the world would have been like <laughs> if Nintendo had gone down that road, um, but they didn't. It seems this was just a proposal. It's not even like they were in development or anything. Then obviously they came up with the Wii and they were like, we got to pivot on this. We can't just be chasing power forever, which yeah, can't blame them. Ended up being a very profitable idea for them. So I know I, I don't generally like deliver every piece of news for every single game possible. So it's not like necessarily fair for me to like keep bringing up Paper Mario, but it's just kind of become a thing at this point. So I've saved this part for last. If you don't want to keep hearing me complain about the stuff that Tanabe said, 
says because he he Tanabe will not stop talking about Paper Mario and will not stop giving us things to just be just to be mad about. Um, so if you're not interested in that, you can go. This is the these are the last news stories. I'm just gonna kind of like kind of rapid fire, just like take a couple things that he said. He did an interview with Eurogamer Germany, and this was just it was another one of those doozy ones where just a lot of little tidbits came out. So I'm just gonna respond to a couple individual things here. Uh, one quote. On the subject of straying from RPG roots, even though we've stuck to that decision so far, we haven't decided yet whether or not we will keep doing so in the future. I will say that is um, interesting. He says it's not technically impossible. It's not like off the table completely that we'll return to RPG. Uh, but then he follows it up with, personally speaking, I want to keep developing Paper Mario games that are both innovative and unique. Arlo's snow, okay. <whistles> Come on. Yeah, I'm sorry, Roberta. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I gotta just, yeah, okay. She's so patient with me. Okay, there we go. Straying from what made Paper Mario great once and being innovative and unique are not mutually exclusive. You can deliver the same gameplay that everyone wants that's a rich, rewarding experience while still innovating and being unique. It's called video games. So, it's so bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's called video games. That's super duper. That's a little too far. It's just, I'm sure it's called video. It is though. It's called the video game industry. Look at what anyone's doing. They make a sequel to a thing. They can make a sequel that makes everyone happy, but still innovates. That is possible. This whole idea that he thinks is wrong. It's objectively wrong. Sorry to not pay. You're wrong. Next little chunk. I'm not opposed to the fans opinions. Interruption. You clearly are. <laughs> you clearly are, I'm sorry. Okay, it's not exactly fair. There were some aspects of Origami King that were they, they sort of almost kind of a little bit delivered to the fans what they wanted, but then in a lot of areas, they just, just didn't. So clearly, he is pretty darn opposed to fan opinions. Anyway, he says, I'm not opposed to fan opinions. Opposed, opposed to fan, opposed to fan opinions. We're at the end here, it doesn't matter. However, I view my game development philosophy as separate from that. If we use the same gameplay system wanted by the fans again and again, we wouldn't be able to surprise them or deliver new gameplay experiences. One, when you say again and again, we mean like another time based on a thing you did 20, 16 years ago. That's not again and it. We don't want the same copy paste game again and again because then the whole thing, we wouldn't be able to surprise them or deliver new gameplay experiences. Yes, you would. Again, objectively false. Yeah, you can. That is what a good, oh, okay, sorry. No, 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 that's too far. Okay, I was about to imply something pretty heavy there. I'm just gonna say that is what a per, back it up. That is what another person would do. They would deliver the same thing again and again, like we get with Mario and Zelda, where the same basic core formula is there, but you can still introduce new elements to surprise, deliver new gameplay experiences. That's how video games works. Again, I'm sorry, but that's how <laughs> I gotta, well. It's getting real heated now, I'm sorry. <laughs> and it's okay, I already gave the disclaimer. If you're still sticking around, it's your fault. What's the next one? Let me let me line it up here. Okay, so this one's actually just interesting. This isn't him necessarily saying anything anything wrong that I'm getting mad at. This is an actual like insight into the development. Uh, the quote is, ever since Paper Mario Color Splash, we have almost complete control over the creative direction of the game. Mr. Miyamoto checked in on development once or twice, but there were no specific requests to make changes. However, all character designs have to pass a check by our IP team, which is pretty strict. Nonetheless, we were allowed to change the outfits of some toads in this game. So that's interesting because it means the whole like IP protection thing, the whole no characters and stuff, that is apparently a team at Nintendo, which is almost more confusing because who in that team made that decision and who gave them the authority to make that decision when those restrictions don't apply to every other Nintendo series? That's what's so weird. Why was Paper Mario targeted like this? Um, but anyway, so all the creative stuff isn't necessarily his fault. It's the IP team. It's still a problem with Nintendo, but I mean, I've said it before. I don't blame everything on Tanabe because I don't know everything that goes on at Nintendo. Um, but he does say they have almost complete creative control. And that does make me want to blame him for things like some of the game design elements that I have a problem with. But again, I, we can, you can hear all about that in my review coming up probably in some months. It's 
it's just kind of, it's kind of a big, it's a big project. And finally, people have been digging through save files for Origami King and they have found a value for experience points, uh, meaning that at some point in development, there may or may not have been experience points or something along the lines of experience points that they named EXP. Um, so that's kind of interesting. I don't know. So maybe there was a whole system, system at one point, or maybe this was just kind of a throwaway. Maybe someone typed it in at the very beginning, but they never really were going to have a serious system. We don't know how far along it got, but it is at least a little bit interesting to see just the word, just seeing EXP somewhere within the code of the game somewhere. That's how desperate we are. That's the end. I'm done. No more Paper Mario. No more Nintendo news. You get out of here. I'm just kidding. I love you. Have, thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. Roberta, thank you. Go graze out in the field a little bit, and I will see all you guys next time.